Okay. We've avoided bringing it up, but we're going to bring it up just once. Marco Rossi, what would you trade him for? Kirsten and I dive in, discuss what potential options would be, and if we would even make that call. Billy Garen, we're looking at you to do the right thing. Plus, the Dallas Stars continue on. Which players from the Stanley Cup Finals in the playoffs would we like to see in a Minnesota Wild uniform if we could have our pick? That and much, much more as we cheer on PWHL Minnesota and the Timberwolves to a coveted championship. All that and more, as always, were created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Royal Credit Union, Jim Beam, Livia, and Grain Belt. This is Season 5, Episode 229. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? Bard on Beauties, episode 229. I'm Jesse Pierce, writer for NHL.com. She's Kirsten Kroll in Arena Host 4. The maybe soon to be PWHL Minnesota champions. Who knows? Kirsten, Minnesota comes back uh, from being down two rip. Looked like they were maybe going to get bounced in that first round. Had a really tough go entering into the postseason. And here they are looking at the inaugural Walter Cup against Boston. Down 1 0 in the series. But uh, they've really made this push and made it quite an exciting time to be a PWHL Minnesota fan. They definitely have, and it makes me nervous that you called them the maybe champions. We can't put that out in the universe yet because we can't <laughs> jinx it. I've been telling Natalie Darwitz since day one. I even texted her the other night to like congratulate her, and I'm like, don't worry. I left my chair up on West 7th for the parade route. She's like, you're hilarious. I'm like, I'm just – I'm committed. I'm committed to seeing them this through. Boston's been playing incredibly well uh, as well. They technically upset – Montreal, but they are the hottest team heading into the postseason, I think, so far this year. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, if, you know, let's say they don't get it done, I think Natalie will be coming for you via text message immediately. That's right. I'm ready for it. They made it this way. I mean, it. they've already succeeded or exceeded, excuse me, exceeded what I thought. I truly, watching that Toronto series, again, they got shut out 4 nothing, and then 2 nothing, and then in turn flipped the script and, and shut them out. Maddie Rooney's been playing really well. Um, I just, they weren't looking good. Seven straight losses before they finally got a victory, before they finally had scored a, their first goal in that postseason, that being done here at home. Um, it just, it's it's interesting, but again, Boston's really good. They've got Hillary Knight. They've got Hannah Brandt. They've got a number of names on their roster as well. Um, I'm hoping for a five game series though. I'm hoping just push it, go the distance, make it interesting, make it tight. And, uh, let's have some fun out there. They will be back here in St. Paul for game three, Kirsten, uh, on Friday. How do you feel about the way the schedule kind of shook out as far as it happening over Memorial weekend? Um, you know, for me, that's, that's a little peculiar. I just, I, I worry about how that might affect the attendance. I mean, to be very honest, I'm not happy that any of the games are over Memorial Weekend. I feel like it would have, and I'm not trying to come for the schedulers or anything, but at no. the same time, uh, we saw the first two playoff games. Granted, I think hockey fans kind of lost faith. Minnesota would make it into the postseason considering they dropped their last five of the regular season and then basically got into the postseason, if you will, on a technicality. Um and so I just feel people had low expectations and were kind of like, why am I going to spend the money to go to a game that they're probably not going to win? Well, they dropped the first two postseason games as well. And then I just feel like it was because people weren't expecting it. It was shorter notice. So we already saw smaller crowds attendance wise, those first two playoff games. And now when it's the championship, Minnesota going to be playing, potentially having the opportunity how these next couple games shake out to win the championship on home ice, it'll be on Memorial weekend. And so I don't like it at all. Um, I feel like it just could have been pushed a little further out and I don't think anyone would have been upset by that. 
And maybe it's, I mean, I recognize not everybody has plans for Memorial Weekend, right? But I feel like my whole life, it's been, let's go camping. Let's get drenched in the rain because Memorial Weekend is never good weather. So actually, in turn, maybe it will be better to stay home and go check out PWHL Minnesota rather than trying my hand at my outdoorsy skills. Um, You know, that's just one little, little snafu. And again, it's their first year. They're still feeling things out. They're still learning within themselves. The NHL certainly doesn't take a break in accordance to big holidays or anything like that. The NBA either. Speaking of, I know we're a hockey podcast, guys, but let's do our, our, our! Minnesota Timberwolves win game seven against the defending Denver Nugget champions. Um, this has been another very weird series. I have I played basketball, right? I loved basketball. I never played hockey. It was always a basketball thing. Loving basketball was going to be my life curse, and I was going to go play at USC. Then it turns out 5'6 is not very tall for a post position, which is exactly what I played. Used to be tall in third grade, then it just got kind of short. Anyway, I, you know, I, I'll admit, obviously, I switch gears to hockey. I watch and pay attention to hockey nonstop. I haven't watched basketball heavily especially the Timberwolves since you know the 90s and early 2000s with the KG era they uh the Timberwolves are so freaking fun to watch right now like looking back I mean certainly there have been some games not so fun game six not so fun um but you look at Anthony Edwards and you look at Carl Anthony Towns and Nas Reed and Jaden McDaniel and I think what I really particularly love Kirsten is it's not only super fun to watch whether they're playing incredibly defensively, whether they're playing offensively, but I love Anthony Edwards. He's, you know, we've talked about the young talent of rookies here in Minnesota for professional sports. You've got Justin Jefferson with the Vikings. You've got Kirill with the wild and you've got Ant obviously with the wolves. But what I love about Ant is there is like a cockiness, but it's not an arrogance. And I love, and I, and this could be just my misconception. I feel like in basketball, similar to football, there's an individual is individualized aspect to that, right? You see a lot of players stepping up and it's all about that player. Maybe not so much about the team. There's always the guy you've got the Jordan, you've got the Kobe, you've got the guy and Ant is certainly the guy, but he is so quick to divvy up that attention and to say, you know what? It's my guys here. It's my teammates. It's this, this, and this. And I just love that about him. Like I could watch him nonstop day after day. I need more athletes like him here in Minnesota. I also need more of Anthony Edwards. We need kind of that more mentality. And I think the biggest thing that I really loved was listening to his press conference after. And one of the reporters, I kind of felt in a way, it was kind of a little, I mean, maybe he didn't mean it like this, but he kind of doubled down on it afterwards too. Um, It just kind of seemed a little inappropriate considering the Wolves just took down the defending champions in a game seven after overcoming a 20 point deficit at the half. The biggest, I think, in game seven in X amount of years. And he was like, usually you have to lose on a big stage before you win. And then him and Kat were sitting there and we're like, we've been losing for 20 (laughs) years. For 20 years. What are you talking about? (laughs) <laughs> and he's like, I, I'm tired of losing. Like we lost last year in the playoffs, and Ant's like, we lost the year before in the playoffs. Like, what do you mean? And Ant's like, you want us to lose? And so, I feel just, I don't know. That just kind of came off a little inappropriate to me. I was just like, no, like we should be celebrating. I think I understood what the media had, the media person had questioned. Right? He was like, usually you know, you get to these big stages and there's this heartbreaking loss. Well, the Wolves haven't even had the opportunity to have these heartbreaking losses, right? Because they have been so bad for the past 20 years, which is why they've built themselves into this team. I go back, we'll draw back to the wild just for, you know, our hockey podcast sake. It's okay to be bad. I'm not saying you actively try to bomb, you know, you're not going to pull a Chicago Blackhawks necessarily and just try to be very bad to get those top picks. But that's why they have Anthony Edwards. That's why they have Carl Anthony Towns. That's why they have the players that they do is because they were, it was tough. It was a tough few years for Timberwolves and Timberwolves fans. So I am so excited for the Timberwolves fans and medias. But I think what the, the writer or person in question was trying to say was like, well, you guys still haven't felt that type of loss yet, you know? And I think Ant and Kat had the perfect response. Like, what do you mean? Yes, we have, you know? And again, it's probably a national media member who isn't familiar with the trials and tribulations of the Timberwolves. But I, It probably I mean, was, but regardless, I did not like it. I sure, was like, no, that's fair. It just That wasn't the place, in my opinion, to ask. And also it's like, they just won a game seven against the defending national champions. Like, 
When did the Milwaukee Bucks lose a huge heartbreaker before they won their championship? And that wasn't put on them. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't like it. Me over here just trying to be like, well, as a media member, I probably would have phrased phrased it this way. Uh, But no, I am. I'm, I'm jacked. I'm pumped. I would love to see more. I'm excited to see what they can do against the Mavs. It should be a fun series there. More postseason, Kirsten. Robertson Cup, you were out watching and covering the NAHL this past weekend. How did it look? Who are teams to beat? What, uh, what's that schedule moving forward here for them? We're moving on to the championship. So by the time this episode is released, the Robertson Cup championship will be taking place, I believe, 730 puck drop at Fogarty Arena. It'll be the Lone Star Brahmas taking on the Maryland Black Bears. Both teams... Uh, Lone Star wasn't the underdog. They took on Anchorage. They got it done in big fashion. That second game was a little bit tighter. Um, But Maryland coming in, presumably the underdog to the Minot Minotauros and both teams getting it done. Two game sweep. They had Sunday's slate reserved for potential tiebreaker series clinch in the three game series. Wasn't needed for either team. So it's going to be interesting championship game to see who comes out on top. How have you seen, and I, I, we've talked about it a little bit, and I know I've certainly written about it just with my USA Hockey pieces, but so for those that are unfamiliar, junior hockey's landscape has grown tremendously, and it's so exciting. You've got the USHL, which is the United States Hockey League, and then you've got the NA, which is the North, Amer- North American Hockey League, and then you even have the NA3, which is another junior tier. Um, just from your experience and coverage, because I know you've been heavily involved with the NHL, how have you seen it grown? And what an incredible opportunity, because now you do see NHL players that are coming out of the NA, even some that are from the NA3. You're seeing Division One guys get pulled there. And I mean, ultimately, the great thing about it is it's just growing and exposing more hockey talent. But how have you seen that league in particular really grow and shine and, you know, develop some of these elite players that we're expecting to see? I mean, it's been huge. You talk about NHL players who have come through the North American Hockey League. Um, Pat Maroon being one player to throw out there. Blake Lazat of the LA Kings, St. Cloud State alumni, also having played in the NAHL. Um, And uh, as far as like goaltenders, the league puts out a lot of goaltenders that end up, you know, there's been a number that have made it to the NHL, but also like get tendered by the USHL. Um, And then you look at the head coaches, just coaches who have gone through the league, Now, NHL coaches such as, I believe, John Cooper for Tampa Bay, he was a coach in the North American Hockey League. So not only does it develop the players, but it develops the coaches as well. It was one of my first opportunities, too, as a little reporter early in college, barely 21 years old. And I've been fortunate to get a number of opportunities afterwards. Um, But even you look at the growth of the league as a whole, even this year alone, they're adding three more (laughs) NHL teams. So. Um, The number of college commitments, that's a big thing the North American Hockey League focuses on, is advancing these players and developing them. They get, you know, Division Three scholarships, but also a wide number of Division One scholarships all across the country. So the, the few years I've been fortunate to be part of the league, it has grown exponentially. Yeah, I think it's exciting. Like I said, it just it's giving more opportunities for players to continue to play. There might not be NHL careers. There might not be D1 scholarships, but you get to keep playing at a high level, a competitive level. It's fun hockey. If you guys can get out and check out the Robertson Cup, I do encourage you to do that. Once upon a time, little Jesse also had an opportunity. I worked for the North Iowa Outlaws for a little Oof. bit. I drive up there on weekends. It was a grand old time. I think I sold my North Iowa Outlaws jacket for like 30 bucks, which bought me a case of beer. So that was nice. Uh Yeah. Always getting our start somewhere, right? <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, what was, was I going to do with the jacket? I still have a sweat, North Iowa sweatshirt, though. It was a grand go. old time. Uh, you know, another grand old time. World championships still happening, going on. Do you feel like it is, there's almost too many preliminary games and too many exhibition games? I think I get it, right? Like, I think the IIHF does this in order to hold out a little bit longer as teams continue to get eliminated. You see big names. I know pasta is going over there now that uh, the Bruins are eliminated. So you it's, it allows for higher level talent and bigger superstar names to come in and play before the games start to matter. But it's almost like it's just, it's too long that I start to like lose interest. And then I pick up interest again and then I lose interest. And it's almost like you kind of forget it's going on because it's pretty much the entire month of May. I feel like the world championships have been going on for months. That's really how it feels. It's a lot to keep up with. It feels like, because there probably is something every single day. Um, 
it's it's a little excessive, it feels, at this point, because it's hard, especially in the midst of the Stanley Cup playoffs. I mean, respectfully, that comes first and foremost in a lot my household as well as I'm sure a number of other households just to assume, not saying that there's no interest there whatsoever for the world championships, but it does go a little bit on the back burner for me, at least personally. Um, it's just, yeah, it's felt really, really long. Yeah, it's, uh, it does. It's just hard to kind of check in and check out. And, you know, it's, it's still, it's a really good hockey. I do. I love that you're seeing the star studded names go over there instead of the guys that are like, nah, we're going to take the season off, which I don't blame them either. Right. If a guy's not going to go, I wouldn't blame him if he just got beaten up in game seven of round two of the Stanley cup finals. And you're like, I'm kind of done with hockey. Um, shout out to the kids who need to play multiple sports and take a break from hockey as well. But uh, yeah, I just, it's always been like that, but it's even more so because I think this year I have a new vested interest because it's names that, you know, because of the wild connections or because of the NHL connections. But then I'm just like, uh, just, it, I don't know. It feels it's, it's giving me weird vibes. If that's the best way I can describe it. I'm also just kind of bitter. Like I've saw the wild play all season. I guess I don't need to see the players playing right now <laughs> unless they're in the Stanley cup playoffs right now. So I guess that's my bitterness coming through. I don't think we talked about it last week. How do you feel about Jules Erickson hitting up uh, Matt Boldy? In no, the- we did talk about that. We did talk week. about it. I loved okay. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. We talked about coworkers. I love a feisty jewel and I love yes. him just continuing to get under people's skin. Just teammate or not. It's what he does. Ironically, Sweden, Jules Erickson and Sweden atop the U.S. currently right now as far as points go. Um, so that's kind of exciting. Sweden number one in Group B, the U.S. number two, Germany number three, Slovakia four. Uh, and then over in Group A, you've got Canada leading the group, uh, Czechia number two, Switzerland three, Austria four, Finland at number five, which I find very, very interesting. I also had a dream that I went to Norway last night and to cheer on Matt Zuccarello, apparently, because we're buds in my dream life. And it was bizarre. That is bizarre. I just really hope Jonas Brodeen was able to see Taylor Swift get away from hockey just for a night to go see Taylor Swift's concert in Stockholm um, oh. one of these last three nights. What if he didn't? Does that make him not a Swifty? No, because I understand <laughs> he's, you know, he's a busy man. He's got other priorities right now, i.e. being hockey. But, you know, I'm just coach. Give him could have, you know, put in a good one. Giving him a pass for one night, once in a lifetime experience to see Taylor Swift. We've never figured out if he has seen, if he, if he saw the heiress to her, right? Did he ever come out? I mean, no, I, I, asked I asked you to ask him and you said, no, <laughs> the dude was hurt all season. He was never around. He I was not heard hurt all season. <laughs> <laughs> I had no he came back. There was He's, ample opportunity. I'll, I've told you this and I will double down. Jonas is like in and out of that locker room. It is very hard to catch him at his stall. Like usually, and if it is, I always have to make requests. They're like, ah, he's already gone. Like, of course he is. He's just, he slipped, but he doesn't do it in like a like sneaky, like rude kind of, he's just, he's just in and out. He just kind of takes care of business. I'm going to take business into my own hands this upcoming season. I mean, I welcome the Minnesota wild entertainment correspondent. I, th- I am Create shocked it hasn't been a thing. Yeah, it's a, it is. It's, I ran into uh, one of the marketing directors for the Wild this past weekend, and we got we had some conversations. We had some good ideas. I should have brought up the entertainment correspondent, but yes. I'll keep it on his radar. Reserved for Kirsten Kroll. Reserved for Kirsten Kroll. I think that's fair. Uh, you know what? I'm going to reserve comment on the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs until the next segment here. So we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey guys, Jesse Pierce here, and I don't know about you, but I am so ready for summer. And you know what? I want to kick off my summer the Livia way, and you can too. Join today, and you could lose up to 20 pounds or more in your first eight weeks. That's right, 20 pounds or more in your first eight weeks. How great does that sound? By following Livia's nutrition plan and with the help of their expert team of registered dietitians and nutritionists, that's how it works. Imagine how much better you'll feel, not to mention how much better your summer clothes are going to fit. Join today and you'll receive a complimentary in-body scan. I'm down more than 30 pounds since starting my Livia weight loss journey a little more than a year ago. And with the help of the nutritional plan that we designate just for me at my Woodbury Clinic, it's worked. I've not only lost that weight, but I've continued to keep it off. I am also using the GLP-1 Livia Medical, and that has been a tremendous aspect to complement the Livia nutritional plan. I could not 
recommend it more, you guys. And that's why I am extra ready for summer. Who wouldn't be, right? Lutri Livia's nutrition plan and a complimentary in-body scan by visiting Livia.com. That's L-I-V-E-A dot com or call 855-GO-LIVIA. Livia's medical weight loss is now offering GLP-1 medication starting at just $2.99 per month. It quiets the food noise, sees accelerated results to help you get that summer bod, feel good, look good, all of the above. Let them know Jesse Pierce and the Barda Beauty sent you. We're back. Now is the time you've all been waiting for. The Dallas Stars are moving on to the Western Conference Finals. Their opponent, TBD, which will be established, I believe, tonight for Game 7 between Vancouver and Edmonton. So by the time you listen to this, we know who Dallas is taking. Kirsten, you said last week, whoever wins between Dallas and Colorado is probably going to win the West. You still feel that way? Are we, are we feeling uh, good? Dallas, again, they're, they're just good. They're just good. I still feel that way, um, especially considering, let's say, Vancouver comes away with the series against Edmonton. Brock Besser's out. And super unfortunate for him. I don't think there's one person who, especially considering the year he's had, wants to potentially see his season end in the fashion it is seemingly to be going right now. Um, it was reported it was like a blood clot he's dealing with right now. And I think it was questionable if he would return for the rest of the Stanley Cup playoffs. So I'm really hoping what we just saw from Brock, Brock Besser wasn't the end of his season that we are able to see him come back out. Um, but if let's say Vancouver again clinches and they don't have Brock Besser, that's a huge, huge, huge loss. Um, and so that doesn't help the case for an opponent trying to come ahead of Dallas. So I still think probably Dallas will still make it to the Stanley cup final, but you know what, if they do, it just makes it so much sweeter for an Eastern conference team to just <laughs> blow them out of the water. <laughs> Which would be the Rangers, because you said whoever wins between New York and Carolina, right? I did. Uh, Florida's just on another one right now. Dude, Florida's funny to me. Like, they're just so funny to me. I also should apologize. I feel like I owe Brock Besser an apology because just last week on Judd's Hockey Show, I commented on how it was his first complete season. I think he'd only missed one game with injury and then unfortunate uh, draw for him. But I, I do. I love me some some Brock Besser for sure. I, I would agree. I want to see Vancouver move on past Edmonton. I'm torn. I haven't watched that much of that series. I talked about that last week. It just it's late, and I don't know why I don't have the vested. But I love Rick Tockett. I dig Vancouver. Um, again, maybe it's the jersey coloring for me. It's very similar to the Hartford Whalers or the T Wolves. Um, and I don't know. There's just always something funny about Khan and Leon Dreisaitl just not quite making it there. I want Connor McDavid to win a cup. I want to see Khan win the cup do i want evander kane to win a cup oh mm. god no absolutely yeah. not like gag me <laughs> Ugh. i hate evander kane i don't <laughs> like him i don't think there's any source of redemption for that man in my eyes uh, i'm just gonna i know i got in trouble the last time i spoke very openly and candidly about evander kane but he's just one player i do not like don't like him do not want to see him win a cup but con mcdavid go after it claim your own on your Richter scale of hatred, is it go Evander Kane and then Dallas Stars or like Dallas Stars, Evander Kane or like where does that fall? And then like are Taylor Swift's exes on that Richter scale as well? Like is there anyone, you know, I, some Swifties have very hard feelings toward like John Mayer's and of the world and stuff. But nah, I could care less about Taylor Swift's exes. I keep okay. that part of the fandom out of my fandom. Yes. Um, I honestly, if anything, I'm grateful to Taylor Swift's exes for giving some great music. Um, true. So, you know, end of the day, I can't really hold any, any animosity towards the John Mayer's and Jake Gyllenhaal's of the world, but I can hold animosity towards the Vander Kane's of the world. The only thing that would make me hate the Dallas stars even more is if, they added Evander Kane to their roster. Oh, that's spicy. That would be something. I don't, I don't disagree with the Evander Kane take though. I just kind of, he's yeah, I, I can't disagree with that. I can obviously disagree with the Dallas stars. Um, I, I will say the bittersweet part of that. Like I was, I was very excited. Even my husband was like, why, why do you care so much? I'm like, I can't explain it, but I just, I like watching them play. I want to see them. I just I feel vindicated when they're successful, right? I just I like feels watching good. you dig your own grave. So I'm I just, just going to keep it feels letting you good. talk. <laughs> and I felt very vindicated when we were at the Minnesota Warriors golf tournament 
And uh, <laughs> that kind woman came up and she pointed at me at first and was like, yeah. are you the Dallas Stars fan? And I was like, absolutely not. But let me introduce you to who is. <laughs> I felt vindicated because she came me. for you. It's me. Rightfully I, so. I, I'll stand. They're just, they're fun to watch. But the bittersweet moment I had was knowing that it's Zach Parisi's likely last season, right? I mean, I think a very, very slim chance. He was very vocal about, uh, you know, it being it for him just based on the injuries, based on the family time. And it's funny, I never realized how similar him and Joe Maurer were until he had that comment post game saying, yeah, I, you know, I don't want a front office job. I've actually talked to Joe Maurer and I would love to coach kids and just kind of spend time with the family a little bit more. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Not only are they the same age, but they were like kind of the icons of Minnesota sports at the time. They both have twins for kids who are about the same age. I mean, there's just a lot of connection. Also, shout out to Zach Parisi's facial hair because this is sad. Never seen him go that deep into the playoffs. So you never really get to see the facial hair, but he looks night and day different as most men do. But like, it took me a minute to be like, holy cow, that's that's Zacho, huh? Like just mm -hmm. some good scruff going on. That man's gorgeous either way, but add a little bit of scruff and he's a man. He's a man, but that's, I do, uh, great. If, if it in fact is his last year, uh, a hell of a career. I know it's tough as Minnesota fans with how it all ended with him not being able to bring the wild to the promised land, but I think there was never a mistake in signing him and, and making that push. I think it was great for him, uh, obviously great for him and his father to have that connection. Um, and yeah, well, now we'll see Ryan Suter advance on <laughs> again i'm letting you dig your own grave i don't want i will say that as kind as ryan Suter always has been to me i'm not exactly exactly on team suits like i get the hatred and animosity there there because there's always just kind of been this attitude around him and kind of this i don't know this face of his that just kind of is bothersome and rubs you the wrong way. So no, I, you know what? I'm not even saying anything about Ryan Suter's personality or anything about him on a personal. Cause yeah, I, I mean, I've heard the rumors. I don't know anything about him. I'm just, you know, going off of the animosity <laughs> with the wild fan base. It's a lot. So this is a battle now between you and wild fans. It's, it's a lot. Well, it's funny. Cause with Suter, he also has that animosity from Nashville too, right? So it's like, I feel like the fans have a good inkling of what they like and don't like. And if that's the case for Ryan Suter, that's unfortunate. All right. So you're obviously wouldn't put Ryan Suter on the Minnesota wild, but if you were to pick a player from each team, you can either go from the entire start of the playoffs. So the entire field, or you can go down to the finals, which players would you absolutely kill to have on the team you could do the fantasy ones and then maybe let's bring it realistic and say like okay well i would trade xyz for this player what are your thoughts i'm thinking my lack of silence or my silence, is silence. Me. the gears are turning connor mcdavid i'd sell yes. everything for connor mcdavid would you yeah like what if what if they approached you with a one-for-one -one Kirill for con i would do it yeah a thousand percent i would do it um, Brock Besser, I would also like to see. I wouldn't sell the whole house for him, but what pieces would I trade? We could trade, we could add a Marco Rossi in there. I would trade a Marco Rossi as part of the deal for a Brock Besser. I'm still thinking, I don't really know. I don't know. I, I do, guess anyone I would, would really be on the table for like superstar player trades. Yeah. I would take swayman and or Almark, right like i would really strengthen that goaltending presence um i would oh, give up also give me nathan mckinnon and kale mccarr sell <sighs> everything for yeah those two sell the entire team for a package deal of those two. Oh my god yes and then just yeah figure out like here you guys have nobody else around you right now but we're gonna get there i promise yeah i would mm -hmm. sell i would sell every you would even sell jonas brodin I, cut ties. You got to draw the line somewhere. Cutthroat world. I would do, yeah, for Allmark or Swayman, either one. I would be, I would be thrilled with either one of those goaltenders. I would get rid, not get rid of. I oh, would wait, trade. no. The only person I'd really save is Brock. Faber. Yeah, of course. Yeah. We're keeping I mean, him, him and Kale McCarr could be <sighs> nasty. Yeah. Roman Yossi also get him on the squad. Just. Yeah. Shut down defense right there. 
You need the scores, though. I agree. You know, it's funny. And, and I would... hey, Roman Yossi is a good two way player. He's a good two way player, too. But Brock Besser still does like it, it circulates and percolates, right? I think he's very loyal to Vancouver. Um, and I think he's going to be very expensive when his UFA comes up to this point. I think Vancouver will probably obviously want to retain him. Um, you know, I know there's obviously the connection here with Minnesota, but I also always kind of hate those connections, right? Like it just, as Bill Guerin said, when he signed Nick Bukestad, because Bill Guerin had played for the Bruins, but you know, a Massachusetts native, he's like, it's hard. It sucks to play for your hometown team. Cause there's this new pressure. People forget that you're working. They think it's just cool that you're home and there's connections, but I also, it just, those narratives and storylines get a little exhausting. I want Brock Besser here because he's a good player. I don't want Brock mm-hmm. Besser here because he's from here. I could give yeah. two shits. I could agree with that. Like, I'm not saying let's get Brock because Burnsville kid. No. Just he's good. And he's a good person. Yeah. He is. He's a good human human being. Great head of hair. <sighs> so good. Just so good. Suave. I've heard a number of men here call him Prince Charming. <laughs> Yeah, it's when you it, have men pinning you as Prince Charming as your nickname, you know you got a good head of hair and a pretty face. Something about it. I still I I do. I go back to that picture where he's down on one knee for whatever reason talking to me and I was like this is my favorite picture in the entire world. Just so good. Um I would also probably Leon Dreidel. You want Khan, I would take Leon Dreidel over that. My I favorite German. And he's he's a possibility. He's a potential. I think he's again very expensive, but you make a move. Let's talk about Marco Rossi. How realistic do you think it is that the Minnesota Wild would move him this year? I mean, I didn't. Again, I I've been on the camp. Do not trade Marco Rossi. The only reason I've thrown his name around just now for like talking about getting players is because one, he does have trade value, especially after mm-hmm. this season. There's trade value there. But also, like, if we're, like, hypothetically speaking about putting him part of a package deal to get an absolute superstar, that would be different. But overall, realistically, no, the Wild should not trade Marco Rossi. And it kind of really irritated me, those rumors, whether they hold weight or not, were starting to circulate this season, um, more so towards, like, the off season. All of a sudden, it was like, Marco Rossi, what could the Wild get for him? And like, you know, wild office, even though he did everything he was asked to do this year, still potentially a name thrown around as a trade because of his size. And I get it. The wild need more size, but I'm like, you're going to trade him and he's going to go really just blow up somewhere else. So no, I, I think it's a realistic possibility. The more the off season's going and just having heard those thoughts circulating, but I just don't think it's something they should do. At least not right now. Here's my take. And it's funny because this is the most, this is the hottest topic or the most question I get is about Marco Rossi. Everybody that swings on through my grill stand at the golf course is like, so what are you hearing about Marco Rossi? And I'm like, I ain't hearing shit. Cause I don't care right now. <laughs> like it's too early. They're they're You know, it's uh, once June hits, then maybe I turn hockey on a little bit more again, as far as the wild and the rumors and all that. From a personal standpoint, it's kind of a crappy thing to think about Marco Rossi getting traded out of an organization that he did so much for. From a business standpoint, he's tradable to me. I I think hell of a year last year. You can't take that away. And yes, the hope is that that can be replicated. The hope is that was just the beginning of a fant- fantastic career. But the reality is you don't know. We don't know if that is going to be the same thing. You don't know if, you know, is Marco Rossi necessarily a guy that you are pinning everything on? Like he's a big, you know, integral piece. He's a Matt Boldy. He's a Brock Faber piece of this puzzle. Maybe, but I don't know that I'm 110% sold. So I think if you, if somebody wants to give you a first rounder and a very good player back for him or whatever that might look like, I don't want just picks. I want players back. I want good players. I would say, why, why not? Because again, I'll always maintain you have very few untouchables on this team. You if, remove the no moves and the no trades, but your untouchables are Kirill, Faber, Brodine, and Jewel Eriksson. Those four players, I think, are the only ones that I would always say absolutely not. Everybody else, no matter how much you like them, no matter how much they might make an impact, it's kind of like I could do without them. If your return value is going to be good enough, I I will always hear that out. And again, that's the same with Marco. I'm not saying 
trade him for nothing or just trade him for picks like I was prior to this year. I mean, this year he really showed that he's worth even more than just picks. But yeah, I think if Bill Guerin hears the right thing, it's a business. It's it what is a and- player you're going to get in return for him. I don't I'm sorry. I don't want a player who's like early to mid thirties, like on the back end of their career <laughs> for the hope, like, Oh, well they've done this or they're going to be a grinder for us. Like seeing that tired of that, they don't do anything when we do bring them in. Like respectfully, what did Ryan Reeves or Pat Maroon do for us? Right. Well, and that's just it. That's that falls on Bill Guerin getting the right type of player. I need a young guy back in exchange, right? I don't And I don't need... have confidence he's going to do that. I'm going to straight up say it right now if you trade yeah. Marco Rossi, I do not have confidence you're going to pick the right player to get in return for his value. Yeah, I mean history shows that Billy loves his his old men. He loves his, his quote unquote season bets. Sounds like a good time. I'm going to have to text Bill after this and be like, "Hey, we need you on the pod." We're going to hit you with some hard balls. We're going to hit you with some fastballs and uh, really see, dig into the affinity you have for the grizzled vets on the team and how successful can a team full of 30 year olds actually be? Because it wouldn't. No, I, yeah, and I would agree with that. I just, if you get back, I, this wouldn't happen. Wyatt Johnson, if Dallas came up and said straight up one for one, Wyatt Johnson for Marco Rossi, I, I wouldn't even be able to book the plane ticket fast enough see but we know that's not going to happen no so we like we stick do. with what we have because we're not going to get in my opinion something better you're going to get a good player whoever that may be in a draft pick well the draft pick yeah while exciting you don't it's just another hypothetical like you don't know what they're going to shape out to be you don't know what marco ross is going to shape out to be like 100 percent. it's interesting it is it's it's something i just think Sure, I would. I would always entertain the idea, um, but yeah, it would have to be younger. I do love. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I think I said on the podcast how I don't feel like Pat Maroon was ever invested in Minnesota, right? I just never. And he just doubled down when he was like, "Yeah, I really love Boston. I'd love to come back to Boston." I'm like, I never saw this Pat Maroon. I barely saw Pat Maroon <laughs> bumming around, but it is. And I'm like, it just something needs to change obviously within maybe Minnesota's organization too. I Pat Maroon was he valuable to a playoff team? Sure. Was I wouldn't take him back obviously. Like I'm not bummed that we don't have Pat Maroon, but I'm just saying a Stanley Cup winner sees there's missing piece or there's a reason that he didn't, you know, fully invest himself into Minnesota. I don't know why, but I just always found I found that very interesting. I found that very peculiar quote like I want to come back to Boston. Like of course you did. You never liked it here in Minnesota. Then know, again, he didn't select to be here either, so he has a better chance to win in Boston. Would you ever? Would you? We've talked about this, Matt Dumba. Would you bring? No. Him, are you bringing? You're not bringing back Dumbs. No, not even for league men. Respectfully, no. Like mm-hmm. he was great for Minnesota, great guy. But I mean, and I say this very respectfully because of all of that being said. Like he. It, Great community guy, great person, but hockey player standpoint, he's not going to make the wild better. How about this one? Toss another one at you. Patrick Kane. No. No? I think he's... I. This is my thing, and this goes with, like, Zach Parisi, too. You wait half the season to figure out which team you're going to go play for in order to try to chase another Stanley Cup in Patrick Kane's case or to try to win a Stanley Cup. For me, I've, and it, regardless of the player, regardless of the person, I don't like that. I think if you're going to win a cup, do it with, you know, if you're going to pick a team, like stick with them from the beginning. That's my take. I don't like it. So Patrick Kane, because I feel like he's done that the last like two seasons, it's annoying. I mean, I think Patrick Kane's still such an impact guy though, right? Like, put aside the Chicago Blackhawks terrible time and you kind of just I don't know he didn't and he only waited like a month or two I think right he think he signed I thought it felt longer than that it did because it was everybody was wondering right like he had his season in New York did fine and then signed November oh, it was fine, November 28th so it wasn't terrible and he signed a one year with Detroit but I think and and again this goes back against what we were just talking about he is 35, 36 years old, no. so he is old, too. But I looked at how important he was to a young Detroit team, right? Like, that's a team that has a, should have 
plump full young talent and Patrick Kane was still one of the better players on that squad. I I wouldn't trade Marco Rossi for him, but I would certainly look at something maybe. I wouldn't hate it as much because I think he's still a very, very good player. I would trade Marco Rossi for like an Alex Dabrinkit. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> Kirsten's like, I said I don't want to trade Marco Rossi. Quit Literally. <laughs> God damn it. Patrick agenda. Kane's a definite no. Interesting. I want to know what you guys, how you feel about the Marco Rossi trade again. We're not necessarily stoking the fire. I am. It's just, it's the one question everybody's asking me all the time. And I know it's a very polarizing opinion. I just, I don't see, and he's doing well in the world championships as well for Austria. So that's exciting. It is. It's, it's promising. I think I'm not going to be mad to have Marco Rossi here, but I'm not going to be sad if he didn't, if Bill Guerin, depending on what he gets again, it's all up on Billy G. We need to know. Uh, but yeah, we'll try. We'll see if we'll, we get him on the pod. We'll get him on the pod eventually here. We'll, we'll do that. In my dream, he was on the pod and I like criticized his, he signed like three old men. He used to play for the Pittsburgh Penguins. This was also while I was in Norway being friends with Matt Zuccarello in my dream last night. It was very intense. Clearly I'm starting to miss hockey work just a little bit, but, uh, we miss all you guys. Love all you guys. As always, thank you for the support. Shout out to PWHL Minnesota who let us do the let's play hockey call last week as well shout out to minnesota warriors for inviting us to their golf charity event we've got lots of fun golf content coming up this off season cannot wait um otherwise we're going to take a break next week there will be no new episode next week because of memorial weekend so you'll have to make do without us but new episodes still released each and every week enjoy this week's share like subscribe rate shout out to grain belt jim beam livia royal credit union and talk north for having us on their network as well as our friends over at soda stick that's gonna do it We'll see you later. Okay, bye. Go stars. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like Mickey Mouse there. Beer, near, 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 near.